Lemieux trying to get the motor going. It's thrilling for everyone in hockey to see all five of you at this round table. Have you ever been together in a situation like this before, the five of you? No, I think it's the first, no, time. The first time. Do you have anything you want to ask each other <laughs> since you haven't done this before? Did that hurt when you landed? <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't. no, we didn't feel a thing. What was the story of that, by the way? Were you flying by the time that Noel Picard got you? Well, Noel did pick me up a little bit, but I was jumping also. I did see the puck go in the net, and uh, it was a final game, the Stanley Cup. Were both of you watching? I was watching. I, Mario might be a little younger. No, I was a little too young, I, was, I think. Whoa, whoa, Sorry, whoa, Bobby. Whoa, 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 I was uh, probably be uh, nine that year, 1970, right? I'd be nine years old. I don't think there's any question that uh, anybody would debate. It's the most famous goal that was ever scored in the National Hockey League. So we've all seen it over and over, even if you didn't see it live the first time. The, the great story from the goal, though, was Glenn Hall. He was the St. Louis goalie. Each time I see Glenn, they... You know, ask me, is, is that the only goal you've ever scored? <laughs> <laughs> you got a few more. Yeah. Well, the conversations that you guys have had, I'm sure as you look back to an event that occurred in Los Angeles in January, when you were five of the greatest players, and you were all together on a stage at the end. And Bobby, I guess we'll start with you. If there was one conversation or one memory you had from that night, what would it be? Well, first of all, it was so nice to be there with everyone, so, old friends, teammates. I don't spend a lot of time with these gentlemen, so to spend two or three days with them is, is very, very special. And to be named one of the 100 players is very special. It's not something you think about when your careers begin. <laughs> and here we are, and uh, uh, to be on stage with uh, these gentlemen and so many others, uh, uh, it was wonderful. Jonathan, you haven't met Bobby before. No, I think this is the, the first the first weekend. <laughs> you know when you're getting old is when people come up to you and say, my grandparents used to watch you play all the time. <laughs> That's how we know we're getting old. <laughs> Before we go back in your childhood, Sid, let you and Jonathan pretend that you watched video of Bobby playing in his era, and then you watched these two, wood sticks and no helmets. How do you think you would enjoy playing that kind of hockey? <laughs> I don't know if I could handle it. I think uh, <laughs> we're a little softer than, than these guys now. <laughs> but uh, no, it's fun to see that hockey. I mean, the you know the passion and, and I think the camaraderie that you can see was pretty special. So uh, a lot of respect for everyone who's played. But uh, to see those guys kind of interact was was pretty unique. Uh, your speed. Uh, do you think that would have served you well in 1970, Jonathan? Well. Uh... I guess I gotta be careful what I say. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess uh, nowadays that's what they say is that uh, the off ice, I, I think, is what goes into it. And you see the young kids, you see the Connor McDavid's nowadays are coming in the league. And it's weird to say that uh, I'm almost one of the older guys in the league now, but I mean, every guy comes in, they can absolutely fly. So that's almost something I've learned is to keep working on my speed throughout my career because it, the game has already changed so much since my rookie season. So. I mean, I'm pinching myself right now. Just, it's incredible to be sitting here at this table, but to be able to sit around with some of these guys and uh, just pick their brains as far as what it was like when they played. Because, I mean, it, you just go back to being a kid again and looking up to your heroes and the guys you looked up to and the guys that shaped the game and, and obviously uh, the guys that made you want to become an NHL player to begin with. And that was? Well, the, the men sitting at this table, first of all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Seriously. You down. <laughs> From a bright uh, young age, though, for sure, it was, it was Wayne. Uh, I had the, the Gretzky jersey. I even, uh, I think I was in second grade. My mom and dad 
would rarely take me out of school, but they took me out of school early one day and they got a little scoop as to where the LA Kings were staying before their game against the Jets and uh, went and hung outside the hotel and actually got a picture with Wayne, my brother and I. So I was still a little kid and that's uh, right there a memory I'll, I'll never forget. They probably forget, had a warm so. car, it was freezing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure, but it's, uh, it's you know special moments like that for sure. No one read the play and understood the game more than Wayne. He saw things before you saw. His dad told me a story one time about Wayne sitting in front of the TV, five years old with a big fool's cap, legal pad, and he'd have the, he drew the rink, and he just would watch the game and he'd go like this, with drawn with the pencil. And at the end of the period, he said to his dad, look where the puck goes all the time. Is that amazing? Thinking the game at five years old. He's done it! Wayne Gretzky, the great one, has become the greatest of them all! And there's number 500, Mario Lemieux! Only Wayne Gretzky did it faster. The two of you playing in the current NHL. Would you like that? Considering the rule enforcement, for example, Mario? There'd be a few more five-on-threes for us. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, you get a lot of those. Yeah, a lot of those, but it's a different game now. It's a yeah. speed game, and I think every great player would, would probably adapt to you know, the era that they're playing in, but uh, certainly it's a much faster game. The players are in great shape. They work out you know, 12 months a year, it seems like. They're faster, stronger. Uh, I think the game is better because of that. And of course, the goalies are humongous. I mean, they're huge, and it's it's hard for these guys to score now. But uh, overall, I think the the game is is great. I think great players would would adapt to every era. Yeah, I, I think the same way. The players today are so athletic, and they're so big and fast. Although I will say this, the big difference to me is the equipment. I was teasing Bobby, known to be maybe the best skater ever lived. If you ever take a look at the skates he wore, they were basically a leather boot with a blade underneath it. Mm -hmm. To see a guy like that be right able to there. skate in a pair of skates, <laughs> yeah, there they are. <laughs> be able to skate in a pair of skates that they have today would be something really interesting to see because he was such a special skater. But athletically, the goalies are athletes now. I think when Patrick Waugh and Brodeur and Grant Fuhr came along, people said, boy, these guys are athletic. And I think that changed the goaltending position. And now each and every team has a goaltender that you go, oh my gosh, I can't score on this guy tonight because they're just, there's 30 goalies now and 30 teams and the parity is so much better and stronger. Even the weaker teams aren't that weak. Um, they're, they're very close. So it's a game now where if you're not athletic, you can't play in the National Hockey League. Have you ever dreamed of playing in the current NHL, pretending, let's say, that you're 20 years old again? I dream about playing with these two guys. <laughs> <laughs> we always dream about playing. I, I might add, I, the four gentlemen sitting here could play anytime in any year. <laughs> uh, they're such, such great players, but it's it's a little bit different today. Uh, you know, Mario, you went through the hooking and the, the grabbing yeah. and so on. It was difficult for you, yet you still put the numbers up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some will leave all the numbers you put up, but it, it would be fun. It, it is more open. But the game's different, too, in that we prepare differently every game, and Mario and I and Bobby played in that era where the Buffalo Odd and the Boston Garden and Chicago Stadium, blue line to blue line was like this. So you had to change your style in the buildings that you went into because the ice wasn't as big as the Forum in Montreal or in Edmonton. Now every arena is the exact same. So every game is sort of similar because you don't have those small rings. Mm -hmm. I mean, he couldn't move in the Boston Garden because, I mean, it was like this from blue line to blue line. So you had to prepare for that game a different way or you weren't gonna win. You guys did pretty well. With in those set of line yeah. in. <laughs> I was just thinking, gosh, I would have liked to <laughs> actually like, like to play in the, uh, the smaller <laughs> building. I do too. Yeah, yeah because everything wrong. happens yeah. so quickly, and especially yeah. at center ice. And when they moved the net out a little bit, like a foot, it really bothered me. That was me. for you. Yeah, but it bothered me. I liked it. I liked it tighter, so you could just <laughs> step out, you know. Well, so. I saw Mario's first goal in Boston Garden. Yeah, that's a, it was an unbelievable goal. Yeah. Hmm, the kid might have yeah. a chance. The kid <laughs> might have a chance. <laughs> I saw him score six goals in one night in junior hockey. I think this kid's got a Chance. <laughs> do you remember seeing these two for the first time? Oh, I do. What no do you doubt, remember? No doubt right out of the shoot that they were going to be great players in our game. No doubt. They were going to be 
you know, these guys are great players on the ice, but off the ice, they represent the game so well. And to all of us, that's really important. And then when they go on the ice, you know, we all have levels we play at, and they play at their level every night. You could go to a group out here and ask all well, these four guys and ask if you've ever seen them play. Most will have seen them play. And so, have you ever seen them play a bad game? One thousand points. No, they don't play bad games. They always do something, and that's that's what it's. They're very consistent. And these two young men are great players, as these two guys were. And here it comes. What it's all about. To the captain of the Stanley Cup champions, Wayne Gretzky. I'm a big believer that winning and being a champion is important to a guy's career. great players, you win Stanley Cups, and that's what you set your goal for as a kid. It's heavy, isn't it? Does it Not that night. <laughs> 40 seconds into overtime, and it's all over. Nine months of hard work, the inevitable bumps and bruises, and it's all culminated in the Stanley Cup. For the first time in 49 years, the Stanley Cup will come to Chicago. Sidney Crosby, you will be the youngest captain to hoist the Stanley Cup. And there goes Lemieux, carrying the Stanley Cup around. It'll come back to Pittsburgh. You've all received the Stanley Cup multiple times, and we have this picture in back of you, Wayne, with the cup over your head. Jonathan, what do you remember the first time you ever had it presented to you and you had it in your hands? What do you remember most? I remember that was the official moment that it was over and we had it and uh, we're going home because it was just kind of a, a crazy moment with the way Patrick King scored that goal. I think if you watch the video back, I was one of the last guys to, to get off the bench and I just I didn't want to buy in unless I just knew for sure that <laughs> it was over. <laughs> and I think... Uh, Kaner likes to joke that, you know, I'm, I was being selfish and I wanted to score the winning goal, so I just, I didn't want it to count, but there's no doubt it was a crazy moment. It was a lot of confusion, but nothing like winning it for the first time, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's a little different the first time, I think, just um, convincing yourself that this is really happening. You know, I was actually hurt for the last two periods, so it's tough watching that one, but I really got to soak it all in, and uh, it was a crazy finish the way it went, but... I just found that I had to convince myself this is really happening here. This is pretty cool. It's heavy, isn't it? Does Not that it? night. <laughs> Maybe the next morning it's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> or out of the pool it's heavy. <laughs> That's right. How did it get in your pool a few times? Uh, I think it was uh, Phil Bork the first time we won the cup in 91. We came back from Minnesota and, and uh, we had a little party at the house. Uh, everybody came in and at the time I had a waterfall going into the pool. and. Uh, Borky went up at the top and, and had the cup and threw it in the pool and everybody jumped in and, and it was uh, a party until the next day, until the parade and, and uh, unfortunately the, the cup got broken, the top got broken from trying to pull it from the bottom of the pool and it was a little tarnished the next day but uh, we went through the parade and got it done and looks like it's beautiful again. So you're the ones that are responsible for the white gloves now and having it tend <laughs> Apparently so, yeah. <laughs> Wayne, you had it more times than mm -hmm. anyone. Well, listen, Brian Trache one time told me when he won the cup, I, I said to him, what does it feel like winning the Stanley Cup? And he said, you know, it's so incredible. I wish every guy in the league could feel it one time. And then he stopped and he said, oh, but wait, that's what makes it so special. Not everybody gets to win the Stanley Cup. And it really is something we all dream about. Doesn't matter what age you are, who you are. We all dream growing up as kids of winning that Stanley Cup. And when you finally get your name on it, and I'm a big believer that winning and being a champion is important to a guy's career. I really believe that. And the great players, you win Stanley Cups. And that's what you set your goal for as a kid. So when you finally lift it the first time, it's so emotional and so overwhelming. And I think everybody has said it. You can't believe it the first time you do it because it's so surreal, but it, it's very special. And you weren't a captain, you were an alternate captain, and you are the one who has scored an overtime winner to clinch the cup. And you were pounded on by your teammates, and then eventually they came around to getting the cup out there and presenting it. But before that, the Con Smythe, and all of you have received the Con Smythe. Did you suspect you were going to be playoff MVP? 
I never thought about it. Yeah. Uh, it's we, the last thing. I wanted, yeah. I wanted the big one. <laughs> that was the one we were battling for. So I never thought about the MVP at all, ever. It wasn't important to me. Yeah, I'd have to say the same thing. I mean, it, it obviously was uh, a pretty special thing to be recognized uh, in that sense. But if, if you even talk to my other teammates who wanted Duncan Keith and Patrick Kane, I think we all had maybe similar reactions where we pretty much skated the trophy over the bench and got ready for the next presentation. You know, that's just kind of what it takes to, to win a Stanley Cup. You need guys that are thinking that way, that are setting that sort of thing. They're more concerned with, like Bobby said, the big trophy. Uh, that comes next, and, uh, you know, that's what we were focused on. That's all we really cared about. One year, we won the Cup, and we didn't win the Conn Smythe. Philadelphia won the Conn Smythe. And they presented the Cup, and so we took the Cup off, and they quietly went into the locker room to give Hexy the Conn Smythe. And it wasn't until about two hours into the team celebration, somebody said, who won the Conn Smythe? <laughs> like, nobody yeah. even sort of talked about yeah. it. As long as you had the Stanley Cup, that's all anybody cared about. So, yeah, it's a great honor, but I don't think we, any of us really think about it. No, I think it's when you play for the Cup, yeah. it's, it's your only focus. And, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to play with some great players in the early 90s. Uh, the ultimate dream when you grow up is to lift that Stanley Cup, and whatever comes after that is, is gravy. Yeah. yeah, it's great to be in that company, but... You're waiting for the big one. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you want. This is one thing about the sport that should absolutely never be trifled with. For me, it's the history of our game. You know, the Stanley Cup, the Art Ross, the Hart, all those things that make our sport special and stands out. Um, so I would never mess with the history of our game. I just hope the guys like Wayne and Mary, as an owner, as a GM coach, and works with the league, I hope our players continue to be involved in the game. And I, uh, they're, they're staying involved to help make us a better game, keep our game great, and I hope that never changes. If you look at the teams with coaches, GMs, and so many of our players are still involved, I think that's wonderful. Three against three. Overtime about to begin. Let's pretend it's three on three, and it's Sid and Jonathan and Duncan Keith, and you three guys are 20. And you're the other three. Oh. Defensemen and two forwards. <laughs> they have no shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to argue with that. We have Olympic gold medals present here, and we have an Olympic gold medal general manager here. You unfortunately did not have the opportunity to do that. Do you feel shortchanged at all in your career? I, I don't feel shortchanged about anything. I, I was very lucky. <laughs> I, got, I got to realize a dream, a uh, Stanley Cup team. I'm sitting with this group. <laughs> uh, I have nothing to, to complain about. Oh, yeah, I wish I had played a little bit longer. Other than that, I have nothing to complain about. Uh, one of my highlights, though, was 76 in the Canada yeah. Cup. That was the only time I played for, for my country in an international series, and in 76 playing in that series is certainly a highlight. One and an MVP. And one leg. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, I was just going to get to that, too. You have no complaints, but the fans undoubtedly had a lot that arthroscopic was not present at that no. time. Well, that's the way it, it was. My style of play <laughs> Not a good style of play with my problems. Uh, I like to carry the puck, and if you carry the puck in this game, it's a contact game, you're going to be hit a lot, so I, my style certainly didn't help my problem, but uh, wouldn't change it for anything. Let's pretend it's three on three, and it's Sid and Jonathan and Duncan Keith, and you three guys are 20, and you're the other three. Oh, Defensemen yeah. and two forwards. Suck. They have no shot. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with that. I'm not Who's our goalie? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. We'll let Bobby carry the puck and yeah, Wayne. We'll, Wayne, uh, we'll, we'll stay we'll up that blue line. The red line won't matter. We'll just wait for the blue line. <laughs> it has made the game a lot more fun. Oh, yes, it? absolutely. Great. So exciting. I mean, can you imagine these two guys on oh, three on three? Gosh. I watch every night, my eyes light up. <laughs> I start sweating, it looks so good. <laughs> How many more points could you guys have scored oh, yeah, in three on three? Yeah. There's ties, right? <laughs> ties? Yeah, we had ties yeah. back in those days, yeah. And uh, gosh. It would have been fun to. Yeah, it would have been. But you guys are only scoring 
200 points a year. What the he was. was. <laughs> no, the three on threes would have added a little like enthusiasm to the group. <laughs> Another 20 points. Yeah, that would have been fun. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it's been a wonderful positive for the game that they play the three on three. It's helter skelter for some of the coaches, no question. But I think everybody really enjoys watching it. I think it's one of the highlights in hockey right now. It's it's exciting. And even the fans. I mean, yeah, you can see three on three. They're standing up. It's yeah. back and forth so many chances to score, you know, so That's it's good. very exciting for the game. Bobby, in your 20 years of advising players, what is important for them to know about a life in hockey? I think the most important thing with any young player is, is to, he's got to understand what he does off the ice. And if he's got the ability to play the game, he's going to get his chance. The only place they can mess it up is off the ice. So for a young player and a mother and a father, leave the kid alone, uh, we have all our parents, they just left us, let us play. My father's advice to me was, go out and have fun, we'll see what happens. On the ice, I mean, people say to me, you know, we look after Connor. What advice do you have Connor? <laughs> Wayne? <laughs> I'd have to go There's to Wayne. There's not much you can tell him. <laughs> He's pretty go good. Go to <laughs> yeah. right. Jeez, you're a pretty uh, good you skater. Know, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. Say to Connor, you know, just be aware of who's on the ice, you yeah. know, because he's fearless. That's it. But off the ice is where uh, a young player really has to bear down and do the right things, the training. So you have to keep up. You're playing minor hockey, and then you move up and you play junior hockey. You're playing against better players, and then you're playing against the world. Thank you so much for your contributions to the sport in the past and in the present, your character. And you make us all proud just to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very thank nice. Thank, thank you. you. Good job. Thanks, Doc. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Doc. Thank you. It's the greatest game in the world. And everything I have in my life, I owe to the game of hockey. Bet on through to Crosby.